goodbye, Hanky. Okay, hello. Anyway, I'm not too much of a sketch guy. So, hello, hello, friends, infernal friends. What should we do without Haki? I'm not here to talk about an analysis about the, the meta, the new meta, or the balance list. Just, okay, Hulk is gone, well, what do we do next? Can we play Infernal? Uh, should we wait until drop a Slayer? I mean, maybe, but I think that's more of an Ignite variant. So if you wanna play Infernal, you can. If you've been paying attention to my videos, if you saw the latest and uh, the most recent video, of double loop with Hyper Librarian, we can achieve pretty much the same without Halki, you know? So in that variant, Halki didn't even matter. We're just gonna straight up replace him with, oh, wait oh, a couple more minutes and you will see the replacement card. But anyway, as long as we have Isol, we can still play the deck. That's um, basically what's, what's going on. Now, we know it's not the best deck, it's not the tier one deck, um, but you know, if you if you get Doppel and Oliver or a Tuner Center, you can still do crazy shenanigans, and that's what we like to do. All right, so no, nothing else to say. Just enjoy the video, the combos, and you know, keep playing the deck as long as you want. Okay, so let's begin. Um, first of all, I'm gonna show you this, the two card combo. So what should we do if we don't have um, Halki? Like I told you, that nothing changes. We need the Salt and Oliver. And the idea behind this is that we can start the loop without Halki, you know? Like, just summoning Marcher, getting these four bodies, it's all the setup we need. And this allows us to make everything we want, you know? You could, like, from here, change the combo and go maybe into the Bamboo Sword FTK. You could go into some Power Tool Omega Braver double, uh, double triple loops. You could go into um, Riser Mill Canceller, Baron Summon Canceller, or maybe Herald and then Summon Riser so we banish the Canceller and then DDR to, so we summon it in our turn. Like The possibilities are, I think, endless. But, but my favorite variant, my favorite take right now is with Librarian. So we should focus in on summoning Librarian. And that's 4 1 right now. Yeah, and then Elf. Elf is the new Hulky. <laughs> because this allows the, the double loop. The idea behind double loop is that we need to use these tokens that we summon to somehow get the next double revival. And we are playing like Isol Summon Double. Um, Elf revive double, um, Garden Rose Maiden with Black Garden revive double, and Star Shaman revive double. So every time we use double, we need to focus on reach those points of interaction. So we keep reborning this guy. That's yeah the idea. I mean, you need to understand the concept because in this deck you need to freestyle a lot. I I'm showing you straightforward combos, but sometimes you gotta freestyle when you start with this, when the opponent. DD Kraus, and then you need to use Elf to to combat the D Crow, and then the combo changes when you have an extra monster. When you combo with Gearfrit, yeah, you need to learn how to freestyle for sure. That's that has been the case since the beginning, since day one of Inferno. So if you understand this um, playground, these um, rules, you should be okay freestyling. Also keep in mind this makes the monster a tuner, tuner which comes up in most of the time to make Garden Rose Maiden a tuner. So here I'm gonna start, yeah I'm gonna put just counters, I don't wanna draw because you know the draws are chances. So in this case we are going to draw up to 6, six draws and we are playing, you are gonna see the deck list after this. But with 6 draws we should be okay, we should be okay. Um, because the idea is that the draws are gonna they deal with the opponent um, board the, with the opponent cards after we get after we get a board breaker. So right now we keep going. We summon riser. We revive double with with black garden. Then garden uh, sorry double riser. We go into 
Roland. Oh no, sorry, yeah, Axel Synchron. So this is like, uh, you know, um, these two are replacing Hulk pretty much. Because who needs Hulk if this is already getting us yet access? And why do we want yet? Only because it makes us so we have Shaman access. And Shaman is one more double loop. So yeah, it's not the only way. We could also play like triple DDR and power tool because DDR can loop um, double. But I like this because it, it takes um, less space in the deck. And yeah, so we are using this and now this becomes level four, so four one. Now we make Roland, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Then we revive yet. We make Shaman. Then we use um, Shaman Doppel into Herald. Ah, yeah, I'm changing some so this is protected from targeting. And now, yeah, that's six draws right there. Now we cannot keep drawing unless we somehow get rid of the elf. Because now we just need to make Fleur. Uh, and then we revive Riser to make Charles. And that's the exact same as before, you know? As my previous video, I mean, in the double librarian combo. So we ended on the good board, like the forever, for always, um, the forever, the forever board. Uh, how can I say this? The board that we made all the time. Like before this was legal, it was savage, but this is the same board since day one, I think, just without savage, without smoke. But, you know, here, I mean, two negates and a pop. Um, in this case, we are just drawing six as a defensive option. Of course, we could be uh, running Coral and that six would be eight. Because we just make Maiden Coral into and then Riser. And then Coral gets a draw, this gets a draw. But in my experience, in my testing, we don't need to draw eight, man. Drawing six is enough. But if you want, you could do it. Especially because, you know, Red Layer and and a tuner makes early coral when we want to go second some, sometimes but we don't have space because that was 12 space and now we only have three can you guess those three let me let me know down in the comments or just wait because we are going to see the deck profile after the next combo so that was it that was the combo now we just finish the setup and yeah yeah i don't think we need coral because if we are drawing six, we are having eight in hand, so we just need to get rid of cards or just hope that we throw into call by Imperm so, so we can set interruptions. But man, yeah, it's a lot. Uh, and it feels horrible to discard in, in the end phase, to, to have to have into this card either follow up or hand drops. But now we are going to see the second combo, and that's a trigger combo that plays around any hand drop but Imperm. Because, you know, Gear Fit is a card. Or maybe not any Kendra, because we could get like, I, I don't know, Gamma here and it would be horrible. <laughs> but against most hand drops, like Ash, Nib, Veiler, you know? So the idea is that uh, in the fourth summon we just set up Gear Fit. And every time we do that, we do that. It all has to add a Fire Warrior because we won't have Gas, I mean, we, we, won't, we won't have Father for Blade. So Oliver needs to pitch a Fire Warrior. Yeah. Then we summon Doppel. And it doesn't matter because we are going to draw a lot. So the follow-up, we are going to have the follow-up. Don't worry. As you can see, the combo is pretty much the same because if you paid attention, everything was on four zones up until the, the very end. Yeah, we dump this. We make Roland. We revive, we make Shaman, and here is where the combo ends, <laughs> I mean, the the draws ends. We cannot keep drawing because we don't have space. If we make like Herald here, uh, we won't be able to summon tokens, and we want to summon tokens, that's the issue. I mean, there is a place, so I'm going to tell you, but I don't do it. You could simply just make um, Herald, don't summon tokens. So we get a 6 draw, then we make the Fleur, and then we summon Riser Pass. And then in the opponent's turn, this is going to revive Elf, and then Elf, assuring Riser Quick Effect, and Elf makes Charles. 
I don't do it because you know what? It makes us vulnerable to more things. We rather have the Charles right there. Also, Charles right there means getting follow up with Duran Albin equipped to, to him. But yeah, it's up to you. Um, I think that could be more viable because if I recall correctly, here we need to get rid of the elf because space is space issues. Yeah, we're going to see. We need to make floor. Yeah, here if we just make herald. Um, we don't have space to summon the writer, so we need to pop elf. Yeah, I'm just putting the counters there. We need to pop elf, and so herald should be here, or you know Charles and any any of of those two. I think I think we should. Uh, we should choose Charles because if worse comes to worse, if we need to make the assault, he's a warrior, so we could just use him as and anything here to make assault. But you know, Herald is most likely gonna be outed, low defense, he's, he's tribute himself for cost, so maybe Herald should be here. Or maybe do just do what I just told you, so we just rely on Elf. Main phase one, revive double. This quick effect make charge in the opponent's turn. So we keep the elf that way. So it's up to you. Uh, I don't think it matters too much. We're probably still winning if we if we got this far and we have the draw five. Yeah, but that's the, the combo. Everything was protected by Gifted, which is pretty cool, pretty nice. And yeah, now I'm gonna show you the deck. As you can see from my last video, the deck doesn't change uh, doesn't change at all. Just I, I just changed the, the hand drafts because I think into a tier format, Kinib is more valuable. Maybe even rolling the main, you know? Why not? And then we, uh, we're choosing Valer over Crow because I'm testing what if Valer on Kit Kalos is more impactful than this on a tier name. But you know, this as a six has more value, so maybe just one Crow. So we can small world uh, into crow into doppel. It came up sometimes for me. But yeah, the the non engine is always is always ch changeable. And here, instead of Hulk is Axel Synchron. Instead of Omega is Herald because we need to go into a lower lower uh, level of synchros. Uh, but before we we needed uh, to run double red layer and this mill 5 so we made herald now we, we can make herald without needing to commit two of these in the, in the deck and you know what two of these is not bad but we need to run the hand drops really and i was even cutting this for a while but you know what one as utility going second came up against pry and low attack monsters because you know it's searchable we have seven red layers Right now, without Sprite being so powerful, maybe it's not worth it. We just need to test. To test. Um, yeah, as you see, we could play Coral, but then we cannot have any one of these three. And I think Unicorn Access Code comes up <laughs> more often. So every time that I just do, did the combo and draw six, I was winning. So there was there wasn't um, any moment where I really missed the Coral. The coral draw two more, and now uh, oh yeah, this is something new. You need to understand this. Crossout is not as good here. I mean, I love crossout to death, especially because we really need to play through hand drafts. So if you play it, I understand why. Like you, yeah, you want a combo, you want a auto win, but man, this makes the draws theory much worse. Because think about it, we have eleven non and non engine right now. And you could argue you could play more, that's up to you, but in this example with 11, we need to commit 3 to play crossout, so we, were, we are going to have only 8. And then if we resolve crossout, and that's what we want to do, if we draw this and resolve it, then we have 7. So this makes it, so we just have 7 cards to draw into, and that's not good. It feels bad when we are drawing and then we draw crossout. Uh, yeah. That's why I don't like it in this. I mean, after a lot of tests, I think I, I rather just rely on this, on trying to make a trigger combo to put gear freeze. Uh, I could even maybe side gear freeze, you know? <laughs> but the crossout was doing a, 
a contra counterproductive work. Cold by on the other hand, if we just draw it, it's just set and one more interruption, it's fine. <coughs> so anyway, we're trying the one up pointer because we and my theory is if we are not playing cross out, we need just blow out blow out blow out cards. And for me it was a pointer or or it was like anti-fragrance or what, what other card. I was testing Mischief of the Gnomes, the one that changes the levels in hand. So Sprite couldn't play, but I'm just focusing on tier from now on. And I think this is fine. If we cannot combo, we can sit, sit on this and survive. If we draw into this, it's pretty good. So that was my theory right now. You could also play uh, funny stuff like Gravity Collapse, the one that, you know, tributes a synchro and then the opponent cannot, cannot summon. Uh, but that requires setup. So I really just cards that didn't require setup. So if we get hand trap, if we cannot combo, we can hope to survive. And then, you know, we miss the reboot, so we only have four good back row outs. Uh, again, we should not play in Storm or Evenly because then we cannot draw into those and have them live. Uh, maybe Twin Twister, but I think I'm gonna test just four for, for a while. <coughs> and that's it. <coughs> yeah, you could change this as you want. I think we should be careful with dry trons and, you know, then your tier, <coughs> they, they die to draw somehow, somewhat. And that's the explanation. Hope you like this. Um, yeah, Halki didn't matter because if we are already making Marcher and four bodies, we are lit. And in some cases, in some other combos, it was, I mean, Halki was always the best way to counter Nip. Because if you were threatening with a possible Fleur, a Plus, or Herald, the opponent would just nip. Now we have a token. We use any tunnel extender and make Halki and, and keep climb, climbing. Now the climb is really hard. We would need to play maybe in War Dark Warriors, Parallel Exit, and then make Link Spider and put Parallel, make Zucaris revive the Armageddon. Here, or in, in a more explosive, explosive version of this, maybe if we just summon Doppel, Oliver, get nip, we could play, I am not sure yet, somehow of level 2 extenders and then level 2 and nip token, make elf, elf revive this, then a tuner extender, but at that point 2, two extenders is too much to ask, I think. Um, so yeah, I think nip hits really hard now. So I think the best way to, to beat Nip right now is not putting uh, Isol two bodies and get, get Nip before Apulusa. I think the best way is just Gearfit. <laughs> Gearfit negating the Nip. I mean preventing this from hitting you. Or if you play a brave version of, of Warriors, yeah also a brave that counters the Nip. Because now Nip is gonna be stronger without Hulk. Also, uh, what can I tell you? I'm preparing some spicy, really cool series of videos about the history of Infernoble since the day one until this ban list. <laughs> so yeah, just be ready for that because I think it's gonna be really, mm, really cool and nostalgic for some Infernoble lovers. Yeah, hope you like this. Um, and this is not the only way to play the deck. I'm gonna keep trying to find other ways. But right now this is my favorite and this is maybe the most the most competitive because of the hand drops. So test it out please. Um, yeah. See you on the next video. Have fun with the current ban list. Goodbye.